In life, we have an opportunity to tell stories. Today, I'm going to tell a story of a marvelous young college student who thought she was doing something right. We'll see what the feedback is from my listeners group. We'll see what the feedback is from churches who are trying to teach their children not to interfere with people's rights. In life, we have moments of time to speak a story, and I've practiced this one times already this morning, so we'll see how it goes. In life, there's a little girl named Jane, and Jane is not a child at all. She is about to graduate college by maybe a half year, and openly she has happened upon a homeless person in a parking lot. So in the kindness of God, who is moving her to move herself closer to spirituality, closer to some form of religion, she decides to go and purchase food for him and try to feed it to him. He politely declines her food at first because the truth is, he is not in the mood to be treated like a pet. He educates her on how important it is to recognize that people who live in the streets have difficulties using facilities, so it makes them a little bit more cautious about receiving food from strangers, not only during a time of COVID and epidemic or pandemic disease, but also because of the fact that there is human trafficking that occurs in the streets. People like to give people food that knocks them out so that they can sexually assault them by cutting their beard or molest them by putting their hands in their pants and cutting parts of their body close to their loins to remind the person that they're somehow in a deficit to the other person. It's a hard lesson for young people to learn because they have not had a course in self-defense or self-protection or legal ethics in their college years. Most likely, they learned a little bit about stranger dangers growing up, but they don't often think about it once they get lulled into a life that's full of ease and contentment. Jane is one of those girls who's a sweet child, and he literally produces a relationship with her. He offers her a place to sit down on his cushion, and they sit and talk a while. She discovers that he has some prophetic gifts. He provides her a reading, and she sort of likes it. She also determines that she likes him and she wants to do something for him, so she runs off and gets some real food for him. I think at some point they just start to share the food and he recognizes that the food is safe and it's okay to have some because he hadn't had a lot to eat that day. It's also polite to break bread with someone in a way that makes a good relationship. Over the course of several weeks, Jane continues to come and visit the homeless man on a regular schedule. During those visits, she brings him a few cans of chicken and a few cans of tea because he's educated her that that is the most gracious gift that someone who's living in poverty can receive. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of canned goods, it could just be enough for a day, but that allows someone to save their pennies to do something else in every way. She gets that message and starts to make that regular trip. She comes to work with him because she is learning how to build a LinkedIn profile. A LinkedIn profile is, of course, a professional network. It's long been, since at least 2001-2002, a resume network. It is for what professional peoples do when they want to have a different way to get a job. You put your resume online so that employers, HR directors, and recruiters can hunt for you, find you, and that you, over the course of time, as that social media tool evolved, became a way for you to actually look for jobs. It's actually what companies tell people to do today is get online, look at our website, or look at the LinkedIn, and get on Indeed, and do all this stuff, and maybe we'll employ you. It's actually a lot of work to find a job today, especially in a time of pandemic, when people are doing more telecommuting and doing less in the office. It's how we keep people safe, it's how we keep people healthy and alive, and it's how we keep people thriving. The hard part for people like little Jane is that there is some isolation going on that classes are not the same, that people are not doing the same thing in classes, they're sitting further apart, they're not socializing as much, unless it's the weekends and they're going to some brew pub, but the truth is, Jane has made a relationship with this homeless man. This homeless man has some marvelous things, that clothing that he has acquired over the course of time, either pulling it from people's lives because they've thrown it out, and it's perfectly clean and perfectly good, except for a little rainwater that's hit it, or some other things that she might be favorable to. The man has provided her with a faith fob. He's provided her with a marvelous book on religion of many kinds and many herbs, a part of her social career, but her professional career that's going forward. And that book alone was maybe $15. The fob was probably $10. And I'm only throwing this out there for the people who are listening to understand the value of something to someone else. You see, the value of something to someone else is more important than the value of something it is to you. 
when a person purchases the cord at the store, there's a value for what he paid for it, but then there's a value for how he uses it. And when those cords are stolen from someone who's homeless in the night while he's sleeping, not only is it a federal crime of someone putting their hands in someone's personal property and taking property, it's also a crime in what you're taking from them in terms of their time. You see, time value is something that people don't really think about. People don't think about how when they're working in a job, they get paid for their time. It's an hourly wage when you typically work in retail. It's an hourly wage when you work in salary, but that hourly wage is usually much higher. So to help a young woman who's a college student get ahead of her classmates and get herself ready for a job as soon as she graduates, it's important to start that process a year out, at least maybe six months out. Putting yourself out there, making yourself visible to people, letting them see who you are, letting them understand your, your, your skill sets, your talents, your super science mind, and that's what we're trying to teach her. As the story continues, weeks continue to evolve into probably a month's time. At least four interactions, maybe more has occurred because she's come to see him a couple times a week because she's really enjoying him. She does her little tarot card readings for him and he does her, for her the prophetic gifts from God and telling her about things and relationships and situations and over the course of time they are proving themselves to her. But at some point she provides him a telephone number, at some point she provides him some email addresses and at some point they really start to kind of hit it off. The truth is in life that Jane hasn't really understood the value of what she's received. The value of what she's received is not only in the time value of what he's provided her in time of spending three to four hours every time with her working on her LinkedIn profile, but that time value to him as a professional person in marketing has a time value. And that time value is not a paltry 10 to $12 an hour like a retail employee makes. That time value to a marketing person is a good $120 minimum. To $350 maximum that a marketing person makes. So when someone says to a homeless man, just go get a job, he can say, great, but how is that going to pay for my life? And people don't quite get that today. But as our story continues, we've learned that Jane has now spent a good four to possibly six evenings or time slots with that man. So if we do the time value to that man of what he's expended on her behalf, we're totally free. What is our time value? What is it at hand? 